reference Bible if you want to. But go to a 1 John chapter number 5 and look at verse number 7 and see what the Bible has to say there. 1 John chapter number 5 and verse number 7. Let me get turned over there. 1 John chapter number 5 and verse number 7. And the Bible says this right there, 1 John 5, 7. The Bible says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Now that's an important verse, don't you think? I mean, what concept do we find here in this portion of Scripture? What's the concept that we see there? What do we call it? We call it the Trinity, right? Tri-unity, the Trinity, the Bible shows us there. And we believe that the Bible teaches that, that God is is three distinct persons that you have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Of course, the Son here is called the Word. And you can see that the Word in other places is another name for the Lord Jesus Christ. And it says that these three are one. But you know... Right, it does say these three are one. It doesn't say God are, is three distinct persons. It doesn't say these are tri-unity. It doesn't see these are, quote-unquote, co-equal, co-eternal, co-existent. It doesn't say that. So I agree that 1 John 5, 7 says there are three that bear record in heaven and these three are one. But what does it mean when it says these three are one? But first I'm going to go ahead and let this guy finish his, uh, his statement and I'll show you why it's actually wrong. What Schofield does, right in the center, uh, center reference column, he says this about verse number 7. It is generally agreed that verse 7 has no real authority and has been inserted. Now, what did he just say? He just said, hey, this verse has no authority. It's been inserted. It shouldn't even be in the Bible. He's saying that you need to take that verse out of the Bible. Now, listen, that is an important verse. Why is it an important verse? Because the Trinity is an important doctrine that's taught all throughout the Word of God. And you have these Pentecostal modalists out there today that teach this false doctrine of modalism. Now, anybody ever hear of modalism before? Modalism is this false doctrine where they basically teach that Jesus is the Father, that the Father is Jesus, that Jesus is the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is the Father, and so on, that they're all one. And basically what it is, is that Jesus came down from heaven, and he took off the hat of being God the Father, and he put on the hat of being the Son, and took a different mode. That's why it's called modalism. And listen, that makes no sense whatsoever, because what do we see in the Bible? Is there one that bears record in heaven, or is there three? There so here's the, the problem with his argument. He's talking about modalism. Now, I don't agree with Pentecostalism, and I definitely don't agree with the Schofield Bible, and I don't agree with Zionism. But the Bible doesn't teach the Trinity either. It says there's three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. The question becomes, one what? If it says these three are one, it's for you to figure out what does it mean by these three are one. One what? Now, he's saying that the problem with modalism, which I agree there's a problem with modalism, because he's saying modalism says that God came and changed modes in Jesus. But I'm saying that, no, God is a spirit, as the Bible says, and he's not changing modes because God is God. God is not changeable. God is a spirit. Those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. It's just that God came. God put on flesh. But God is not flesh. God is a spirit. God came in the man, Jesus Christ. That's why the scripture says, in Jesus dwelled the fullness of the Godhead, what? Bodily. And so it said, Jesus made of twain two, one new man. And it says, then by one spirit are we all baptized into what? One body. So it says by one spirit. So it's talking about Jesus. He's talking about made of twain, one new man. That twain was he came in the flesh, meaning he put on flesh. That's why he was born of a virgin. Mary indeed was a creation. Flesh is a creation. Mary is a descendant of Adam, right? And because Mary is a descendant of Adam, who's a creation, Jesus, though he came in the flesh, which is a creation, God, who is a spirit, who is God in the flesh, who came in, which is the point of the virgin birth, is not a creation of himself. He just came and put on creation. He came in the likeness of sinful flesh. But God is not flesh, right? And because of that, when he says modes, it's not a mode. It's just that the flesh is 
is the man Christ Jesus, right? And the spirit is God, right? That's why it says of made of twain. Twain means two. Two men, made of two men, one new man. And that's by spirit. That's why it says by spirit are we all baptized in the one body, right? And that's why it says God is the spirit. Those who worship him must worship him in spirit truth, which is why the Bible also says the children of the flesh are not the children of God. Now, if the children of the flesh are not the children of God, and we agree that, that Jesus Christ did come in the flesh, that would mean that Jesus Christ himself was not the son of God. But that makes no sense, which is why the Bible says the children of the flesh are not children of God, which is why you must be born again, not of corruptible seed, but by the incorruptible seed, by the word of God. And that's why the Bible said it is the spirit that quickeneth, that giveth life, the flesh profiteth nothing. There's three that pair record in heaven, right? I mean, listen, if, if we were to go stand, if we were to go. Notice he says there's three that bear record. There's three that bear record in heaven. Now, we're going to go and find out what that means. And let's listen to the example that he gives. And then we'll go to the scriptures ourselves. Into a courtroom, courtroom, right? Let's say we're in a courtroom setting and there are people up out there and the judge says, hey, why don't you call your first witness? And I stood up and I said, I'm the first witness. And then he got done interviewing the witness. And he said, hey, call your second witness. And I said, OK, I'm taking off my hat and I'm the second witness. You think that's going to work in the courtroom? I mean, you think that's going to hold any weight? If I said, I'm the first witness, I'm the second witness, I'm the third witness, is that going to work whatsoever? No, that's not going to work whatsoever in the courtroom. That's not going to hold up. And so he's saying the, there's three witnesses. And he's saying, well, you can't be all three witnesses. You can't be all three witnesses. That These three have to be three distinct persons. This is what people mean when they say, well, there's three distinct persons. And they always add that. The Bible never says that, but that's what they add. And what they'll say is, well, it doesn't say that, but it teaches that. Well, let's not add to the word of God. And when the Bible says these three are one, let's look at the Bible to say what these three are one, what it actually means. And so what do we see in the Bible? That the Bible makes it plain that there are three that bear record in heaven. They are three distinct persons, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. Now, we're going to look at a few scriptures here tonight. On Notice he says there's three, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. But what did he leave, leave, leave off? This is what all these guys leave off. These three are one. Three are one. One what? These three are one what? You cannot leave off what these three are one, 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 what? What are they one of? On the Trinity and just show you a few scriptures that teach the doctrine of the Trinity. And again, I'm not going to do a whole in-depth sermon on this because there are other subjects we're going to hit tonight. Tonight's sermon's going to kind of be like a shotgun blast because okay. we're going to look. All right. So now I'm going to go to you and I'm going to prove to you that this is wrong. Let's go to 1 John 5, 3, 7 because that's what he started with. But we're going to read it in context because everyone says you should read things in context. So let's read in context what the Bible's talking about when it talks about these three or one. So we go here, we're gonna to go to 1 John 5 3 7. 1 John 5 7. We go to 1 John 5 7. And we're gonna go a little bit above it because I want you to see something. Now here's what it says. So whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. So Jesus already said, My kingdom is not of this world. The light came into the world and the darkness comprehended it not. Meaning the darkness is what? This world. He's saying this world is darkness. Now, is his kingdom a world, a kingdom of darkness? No. So that already kills a lot of arguments and false beliefs that God's kingdom is a kingdom of darkness. He's saying that this whole world is darkness. So anything in this world that's claiming to be God's world, word, world is false. Anything that is carnal of this world that's claimed to be God's world is false, right? Because he says the light came into the world and the darkness comprehended not, meaning this world is dark, right? Okay, so whatsoever born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. How do you overcome this world? By faith. That's why it says we wrestle not with flesh and blood, right? Because once you're born again, you're born again and you've overcome the world and you're no longer what? 
of this world. That is to say, they are not of this world, even as I am not of this world, which makes sense. His kingdom is not of this world. Then it says, who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? Right? This is he that came by water, right? And blood. So Jesus was born of a woman, came by water, right? The womb, water. And it calls Adam, and it talks about Adam. It says the first man, Adam, was earthy. The second man is what? The Lord from above. So he says he came by water, but then remember, he was born by water, right? And then he died for our sins, blood, and he rose again. He was quickened by the Spirit, right? Even Jesus Christ. Not by water only, but by water and blood. And after you die to the flesh, you're what? Regenerated by the what? Spirit of promise. The unique thing about Jesus is that's the point of his virgin birth is that he came in, he, God came in the flesh, born of a virgin, put on flesh, then died for our sins, was buried, rose again, quickened by the spirit, right? Ascended up to glory and sits at the right hand of the father. Now, when it says it sits at the right hand of the Father, that is not literal. And I'm going to show you why that's not literal. And I'm actually going to show you using these verses. So, not by water only, but by water and blood. Meaning he was born of a woman that was of Mary, of the flesh of David, right? But then he says born of water and blood. And he's talking about, and it is the spirit that beareth witness, Right? Because the spirit is truth. So how was he quickened? He was quickened by the spirit, right? Now, there's a reason why this is really important. Because we know that Jesus was born of a virgin. We know that he came with the seed of David. But a lot of people, what they're doing is they're attributing the seed of David as being the children of God. They're trying to say that if you have the children, you're the children of a God, children of God, because you're born through the line of David, the physical flesh line of David. That is where the area, that is where people are trying to say that a person is chosen based on what they call genealogy. But that would mean that anybody who's of that line would not have to be what? Regenerated, right? Because to be regenerated, it means you're no longer of the flesh, but you're regenerated by the Holy Spirit of promise, by the, by the Holy Ghost, regenerated by the word of God. So it can't be what people are trying to do is they're trying to combine the seeds. They're trying to say it was the seed of the flesh and they're trying to say it's the seed of the spirit. And they're trying to combine the two. But going to 1 John 5, 7, listen to what it says. And it is the spirit that beareth witness. Notice it says, and it is the spirit that bears witness. Does it say it is the water or the blood that bears witness? No. It said it is the spirit that beareth witness. Because the spirit is truth. It is saying the spirit, singular, right? The article the, the spirit is truth. The spirit beareth witness, right? Singular spirit. Jesus says, I am the way the truth, the life, right? So if the spirit is truth, then it says, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Well, it just told you it is the spirit that beareth witness because the spirit is truth, singular. And then it says there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. These three are one what? These three are one spirit, and as that spirit is true, and these three are the one witness, the spirit that beareth witness. That spirit is the spirit of truth that beareth witness. That witness is one spirit. And so it's basically saying that the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost is one spirit and one witness. And these three are one. It goes on and says, 1 John 5, 8, which has been erased from the modern ver versions of the Bible. 
And there are three that bear witness in earth, right? The Bible says the children of the flesh are not the children of God. That if you actually have the spirit of God, it says you walk after the spirit and not after the flesh. Even if you have the flesh, you are considered to be walking after the spirit. Notice here's why this is significant. And here is why this is erased. There are three that bear witness in earth, right? Notice he says there's three that bear witness in earth. What do we read above, though? Can, talking, talking about the earth, talking about this world. It says, who is he that overcometh the world? It's talking about this world. Now we go down here and it says there are three that bear witness in earth, which is the world that you need to overcome. There are three that bear witness in the earth. The spirit, and this is the same spirit that bears witness in heaven, and is the one spirit, and it's the spirit of truth, the one witness, which is a single spirit. It says, and the water and the blood. And it says what? It says these three, what? Agree in one. Does it say these three are one? No. It doesn't say these three are one. It says these three agree in one. Right? These three agree in one. It's saying the spirit, the water, and the blood. Well, the unique thing about it is you notice how the spirit is first. Why would the spirit be first? Well, because the spirit, God, who is a spirit, existed before all things. Water and blood, that's talking about creation. Think about what the whole point of a, quote, baptism is. When you're baptized, you're acknowledging, right, that you were born of woman, right, of the earth, meaning you come out of the water, the womb, the earth, the water, right? And then you must what? Die to the earth. You must not because Adam, the first Adam was made from the dust and the children of the what? Flesh, flesh made man from the dust. Children of the flesh are not the children of God. So you have to be what? Regenerated by the word of God, which is the spirit. And that's why it says this is the spirit that quickeneth, that giveth life. So we who are born of the earth, of the dust, right? We came from our mother's womb, water, pulled from the water, right? Baptism. Then you must die to self, right? Which is what the point of the baptism is showing. And then you're what? Regenerated, quickened by the what? Spirit. And even though you don't, quote unquote, physically, people don't see you die. It's just that once you're regenerated, you're born again of the spirit. You're led by the spirit and no longer led by the flesh, though you still may have your flesh. You're considered to be what? Born again from incorruptible seed by the what? Word of God. And the words that I speak to you, they are what? Spirit and they are life. This is significant because the Bible says, and if any man have not my spirit, he is none of his. So that's why that's significant. And it's saying these are people who have died to self, who've died to the flesh in the eyes of God because they've been regenerated, born again by the incorruptible seed. And it's Galatians 2.20 says, it's no longer I that live, but Christ that liveth in me. And Colossians 3 says, you're dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. It is saying that you are born again by the spirit. You no longer are a child of the flesh. And that's why you belong to God. And it's just because you have agreed with God. Right. And when you agree with God, it's as if you were slain and wiped out. And now because you're sealed in God, who is before all things, it is that one spirit of truth. Because all those who are born again of God have what who in them. God in them. It is God that worketh in you to fulfill his good will and pleasure. It is no longer I that live, but Christ that liveth in me. Right? So, that's why it says here next, if receive the witness of what? Men. The witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he has testified of his son. Right? He that believeth on the son of God hath the witness where? In himself. It is basically saying that when you have the witness of God, it is actually God in you. You have the witness in yourself. And that's what makes your witness true, not your flesh. Because you were born of water. You had to die, born of blood. And then once you die to the blood, you're regenerated by what? The word, which is the spirit of God. And so therefore it says, 
he that believeth not God hath made him a liar, meaning that person does not have the witness, which is the spirit in themselves. They're the child of the children of the flesh, which are not the children of God, right? And so they made him a liar, though he's not a liar, but they made him a liar because he believed not the record that God gave of his son. And this is the record that God hath given to us, eternal life. If you don't believe, you do not have eternal life. If you do not believe, you're not regenerated and you're not a son of God. And this life is where, where is this life located? This life is in his son. This is really significant. The fact that the life is in his son and you must be sealed in Jesus who says, I am the way, the truth, the life. It's talking about that life, which is the quickening spirit. If you don't have that, Meaning you have to only you only get that if you're sealed in Christ. Therefore, anyone who claims to be a son of God outside of Christ is a liar. Anyone who says to be says they're chosen of God for anything besides to be chosen for destruction outside of Christ is a liar. Because eternal life is found in Jesus, and that's only by the spirit of truth. And there is one spirit, and there's one witness, and there's one faith, one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. He that hath the Son hath life, right? He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have where? In him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Right? So this is, this is pointing out a really key thing. Now, the other thing that the gentleman said is he talked about modalism. The problem with modalism is it's actually trying to say that there's still this separation. It's basically saying that God isn't a spirit. Here's how you can put this, summarize this whole argument. Look, the Bible says, God is a spirit. In fact, it is Jesus that said this. Jesus said, To the woman, Jesus said unto her, woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the father. Right. Because he's saying you can't worship in this mountain nor at Jerusalem. OK, ye worship, ye know not what we know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. Now, what people will do now is they will say, see there, Bible for truth. The Bible says that salvation is of the Jews. The problem that these people have is for salvation being of the Jews. You have to define as God says, who is a Jew? According to God. Because a Jew, according to God, is We'll come back to this. The Bible says very clearly, and people just refuse to believe it. They try to make it seem like, well, the Bible's saying this, but it doesn't really mean what it says. When the Bible does mean what it says. It talks about here. And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it's fulfilled, the law judges thee by whom the letter and circumcision does transgress the law. For he is not 
a Jew, does it say, well, you're partly a Jew? It says he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. When it's talking about outwardly, it is talking about the flesh, period. Neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. It's talking about the flesh. It's talking about the quote unquote what? Old man, putting off the old man. That's what it's talking about. People don't seem to understand that there is what? There's a spiritual man. There's the earthly body and there's a spiritual body, right? And so that's what people are trying to say that, well, a Jew, they're still Jews. It's just that, you know, they're, they're, they're Jews that don't believe. No, God's perspective. Everyone knows there are people who call themselves Jews, but they didn't believe. That is the whole point of Jesus coming and saying this verse. Otherwise, it makes no sense for Jesus to make this statement at all. Right? The Bible doesn't need to clarify it if this isn't an important point. He is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, period. Neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh, that is as clear as day. There's no need to rewrite the Bible and try to work your way around it to serve unbelievers. But he is a Jew, which is one early, inwardly. The Bible doesn't say here merely. It doesn't say, well, there's still the Jew, but in the truest sense, no. The Bible is saying, Though they may call themselves a Jew, though people may recognize them as a Jew, they may go around claiming they're keeping the law. They may go around claiming all kinds of things. But before God's eyes, these people are not Jews who are Jews according to the flesh, but they are a Jew who are inward of one inwardly. Circumcision is that of the heart in the what? Spirit. In the spirit. You have to be baptized into Christ by what? The spirit of truth. That is what beareth witness. That is how you overcome the world. And that's why Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. Right? And it says, and not in the letter, because no one's going to be saved in the law, by the law, whose praise is not of men who look and compare their works. Oh, how are you doing? Are you keeping the law, blah, blah, but of God. Praises of God. God is not praising man. God praises himself because God is the only one who is worthy of praise. And we must be sealed in him. That's why we say praise the Lord in the highest. Right? God sings praise is not of men. But what we have is a bunch of people who are worshiping men. Now, I'm going to go back because this is telling you who's not a Jew and who is a Jew. So it goes and says, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Right? Spirit and in truth. So if you must worship him in spirit and in truth, and we just saw that a Jew is not one outwardly according to the flesh, but inwardly according to the spirit, that aligns with God, that if you have not his spirit, you don't belong to him and you're not a Jew. If you have his spirit, you do belong to him and you are a Jew. And it's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, not two Lords, two faiths, two baptism, not three Lords, three faiths, three baptism, as the Trinity would have you believe. And the woman said unto him, I know that the Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. And when he has come, he will tell us all things. Jesus said unto her, that I that speak unto them are, am he. And unto them came his disciples and marvel that he spoke to the woman. Yet saidest thou, why seekest thou and why talkest thou with her? Right? So Jesus is telling her. He's saying that those who worship him must worship him in what? This is the important part, in spirit and in truth. 
Now, we have people today who are trying to tell you that an unbeliever is what? God's chosen people. And they're trying to say that those are Christ. There are brothers of God. But the funny thing about that is. When you believe you're born again by the spirit. And when Jesus was asked. Jesus was asked, well, they said to Jesus, this is important because, you know, again. This is when they said to Jesus, says, then one said unto him, behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without desiring to speak with thee. Listen to this. But he answered and said unto them that told him, who is my mother and who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand towards his disciples, stretched forth his hand towards his disciples. And he said, behold, my mother and my brethren, for whosoever shall do the will of my father, which is in where? Heaven. Right. As he told the woman at the well, you don't serve in this mountain nor in Jerusalem for God seeketh them to worship him in spirit and in truth. And if you have not his spirit, you're none of his. Now, is God saying Jerusalem doesn't exist? No, because God is saying that his kingdom is not of this world. And that there is a Jerusalem that's here on this earth, but that isn't the true Jerusalem. And there are people who are the Israel of this world. And there are some who are in quote that Israel, but they're not of what Israel. Because the Israel that God has is a heavenly kingdom that's not of Israel this world which is why he said he that believeth on the son has already overcome the world we overcome the world by what faith and so for whosoever shall do the will of my father which is in heaven the same is my brother and sister and mother and then you say to yourself okay well what's the will of the father If I can find it, sorry. Try to do this on my phone. It's a little bit more difficult. Here we are. Please just remember these verses. Jesus said, right? And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me should I lose nothing, right? He said, I came only for the lost sheep of the house of Israel, right? And so what people are trying to say is the, the sheep of the house of Israel are the ones that he came for. They're saying, well, those are also including uh, unbelievers who are Jews. That is a lie from the pit of hell, because I just showed you that a Jew is one inwardly by the spirit and not outwardly by the flesh. And that unless you're born again, quote, regenerated by the word, the word that I speak to you, there are spirit and there are life then if you're not regenerated and sealed in Christ when salvation is found where? In him, then you're not considered a Jew and you're not considered a brother because you must do the will of the father, which is that, and those are the ones he will not lose. He'll raise you up again the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me that everyone which do what? Seeth the son and believe on him may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up at the last day. Right now, listen to what it says here. 
this term Jews is talking about people who are calling themselves Jews. But I've already explained to you that a Jew is not one outwardly but inwardly. But this is what they're calling themselves. And that's why Jesus is clarifying and the Bible is clarifying because the whole Bible is the word of God, even if it comes from Paul's mouth, because there's only one spirit of truth. There's only one witness, right? The word. So when we speak the words of God, we are speaking the words of Jesus. Jesus is the word. And so the Jews then murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which cometh down from heaven. He's not talking about physical bread. And they said, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? Again, Jesus says, who is my, who is my brother? Who is my sister? Who is my mother? We know that the father is what? Father in heaven. God is the spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. And he's based, they're, they're, they're looking at it carnally and saying, well, don't we, we know his, his brother, his, his father. We know his, his mother. And we know his, 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 his siblings. How is it then that he said, I cometh down from heaven? This is there because they're being carnal. They don't understand that you must be regenerated by the word of God. The children of the flesh aren't children of God. Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, murmur not among yourselves, no man cometh to me except the Father which has sent me. Draw him. Right? So Jesus says, I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. So God is drawing all men. He doesn't say, well, I'm only going to draw, quote, unquote, the Jews, quote, unquote, in this dispensation. But yet he did say, I come only for the lost sheep of the children of the household of Israel. Why? Because Jesus knows from the beginning those who would believe and those who would believe not. And if you believe, then you're a Jew and you're of the household of Israel. Because in my father's what? House are many mansions. Right? And he is the what? The way, the truth, the light. He is the door. He says, except the father which sent me, draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. Every man, therefore, that hath heard and hath learned of the father cometh unto me. Not, not that any man hath seen the father, save he which is of God, he hath seen the Father. Verily I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. Right? This all coincides. I am the bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are what? Dead. God is the God of the living and not the dead. He's saying the children of the flesh, these are the ones who die. He's saying, no, those who believe on me, they shall never die. They shall never see death. Right? He that drinketh of this water shall never die, shall never thirst. And he's calling this whole world. When the Bible talks about the wilderness, it's talking about this whole world is a wilderness. This whole world is in darkness. This whole world is in death. And that's why he says, I came to give life and life what? More abundantly. Because everyone has sinned and fallen short of glory. And if you sin, it says you are dead in your sins. This is the bread with coming down from heaven. That any man that a man may eat thereof and what not die. Right now, this should be clear to anyone that he's not talking about people of the flesh. He's talking about being born again by the spirit and you will not die. I am the living bread which cometh down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And that bread that I give is my flesh. Right. Born of water. He was born of a virgin. Right. But was born of water. And in born of what? Blood. But he was quickened by the spirit. But see, that's the thing. Jesus came. That's the point of the virgin birth. The spirit came into what? A woman who was flesh and blood of water from the womb. Water died on the cross. Blood. What? Quickened by the what? Spirit. God did not die. God cannot die. Why would Jesus say, he that believeth on me shall never die, and then he goes and he dies himself? Right? He's not a, God is a God of the living and not the dead. That would mean Jesus is not a God of himself. Right? Makes no sense. So, which I will give for the life of the world. Right? He died for the whole world, but you only belong to him after you believe, because after you heard and believe the gospel of your salvation, then you're sealed with the what? The Holy Spirit of promise, which is the regeneration. You must follow him in the regeneration, right? 
the Jews, again, these are those who call themselves Jews, therefore strong among themselves, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto him, then verily, verily, I say unto you, except that ye eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink of his blood, ye shall have no life in you. Whosoever eateth my flesh and drinketh of my blood hath eternal life, meaning you must die. Like Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I. When you believe, you are considered to be Jesus. It's, it's just considered as if you were died with him in his death and raised in newness of life with him, right? And I will raise him up at the last day, for my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is my drink. He that eateth of my flesh and drinketh of my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. Notice he said, dwelleth in me, and I in him. He's saying that before he died on the cross. So dispensationalists are lying. As the, as the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is the bread that's coming down from heaven, not as your fathers, right? He's not considering those people to be his father. He's talking, when he's talking spirit, he's like he's discounting their flesh altogether. Your fathers did eat manna and are what? Dead. That's why he said, he that believeth on me shall, shall never die. He that eateth this bread shall live forever. These things he said in the synagogues, as he taught in Capernaum. Many, therefore, of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that they murmured at it, he said unto them, Does this offend you? Right? Does this offend you? What if you see the Son of Man ascending up where he was before? It is what? Listen to this. It is the spirit that quickeneth. This is Jesus saying this. So you can't like dismiss this and be like Jesus is lying. You're discounting. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. Right? So anyone who's trying to tell you, oh, well, this, there was some rejection and God was kind of caught by surprise and now we're in a prophetic phase and we're at the church age. That's a lie. We know that's a lie. Because the Bible doesn't speak of any, quote unquote, periodic pause that made the church age appear. Because the Bible says, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages. And it talks about world without end. Well, the problem that these guys are going to have with this, this world without end is we know that this world will end. Right. We know that this world will end, but they're trying to say, well, this church age has to end and then the world's going to go into this new phase, this new quote unquote age. No, there are two worlds. From the very beginning, God made two worlds. Right. Because God knows the end from the beginning. And, you know, he, there's going to be two. There's two worlds because the Bible says this. Two verses say this. Hebrews 1.12 Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by also whom he made the what? Worlds. Right? The worlds. Right? And that's why he says, you can't see the kingdom of God unless you're born again. That's why he said, my kingdom of not of this world and he says, unless a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And he says, my kingdom is not of this world. So if his kingdom is not of this world, that must mean there's another world. Right? Now, here's the thing. You know, they're trying to fool you because these same people who say that they believe the King James Bible is God's word are the same people who will then go and say, go back to this, 
They say, oh, I believe the King James Bible is the word of God. And I show you, as he said, he made the worlds. Well, let's go to the ESV. Let me show you the deception. Let's see. Where it says he made the worlds, and also he made the worlds here. Notice what they do in the ESV, which is over here on this side. Here what they say is they take off the S. Notice that? They change worlds, plural, to world, singular. Right? Why are they doing that? Because they're trying to teach that it's going to be the same world and it's going to just convert over to the, at the end of the quote, church age, which I just proved is a lie, is going to revert to the ages. This is going into what you call carnal Zionism. Carnal Zionism is trying to teach you that that place over there in 1948, which is a complete lie, it's a deception. And they're literally using the Bible to fool everyone. That's how they get gullible, false religions of all sort to support and believe it. Right. Let's go look at the other verse that talks about worlds, plural. Type in worlds again. And we have Hebrews 11, 13, 11, I'm sorry. Yeah, 11, 3. And it says here, through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Right. Right. Worlds were framed. Notice here, KJV, the worlds were framed by the word of God. Meaning he made the worlds, he made both worlds, were made. Notice, were framed, past tense. It's very important that you understand this is past tense. Were framed by the word of God. It says, so the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Right. It's already made. The new that other world is already made. It's already there. That's why Jesus said that those who worship him was worshiping in truth. He says, neither in this mountain nor in Jerusalem where you worship. It's not that Jerusalem doesn't exist. Jerusalem does exist. It's just that the Jerusalem that God is talking about is the Jerusalem, which is in the heaven, which you to enter that kingdom, which is the kingdom of God. You must be born again because if a man not be born again, he can't enter the kingdom of God. Right. So that's why it says here in the other version Instead of saying the worlds were framed, it's talking about the what? Look at this. The universe. That's their slick and sly way of covering up worlds. They don't want you to see worlds, plural. They, want, they say universe because they're trying to hide it. Because universe is an ambiguous word that's actually not even made. In, that's not even included in God's word. There's no, the universe is not included in God's word. But that's why they use that. That's why they invented that. So they can include that in the word so they can deceive you because they don't want you to believe that. I will also want to show you that this is why it talks about Jerusalem. Jerusalem above is free as mother of us all. So when we go here, here's what you need to notice. Here's another change that I didn't even notice they actually made this change, but this is good. I'm going to show it to you without it, and then I'm going to show it to you with the, with the change. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. Notice that? Does it say it's the mother of some? Does it say it's the mother of... Uh, the quote unquote uh, Gentiles, but then there's the Jew. God's already explained to you that a Jew is one who is a person who is actually born again. Because a Jew is a jewel, which is a precious stone. And Jesus is the precious stone, which is a spiritual stone, which you must be born again by. And once you're born again of that thing, you're born from what? Above. That's why it says Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is mother of us all. Now, let's see how they change that in the modern versions. You go to the ESV. Click. Let's see what do I do All 
All right, Galatians 4.26, passage. But Jerusalem above is free, and she is our mother. Notice they took off. <laughs> they took off of us all. You know why they took off of us all? Because you have to be born again. You got to be born again by the Spirit. And that's why it says the children of the flesh aren't children of God. They're trying to fool you to make you think there's a carnal Jew, and there's a carnal this, and there's a carnal that. But here's the thing. God considers all those who believe in him to be of his flesh. Even though God is not a flesh, he's identifying you. If you believe you're called the body of Christ, not only by spirit, he's identifying you as the body of Christ by flesh. You know how I know that? Ephesians 5, 30. Let me show you first without the changes. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. And just showing you that he's talking about the church, right? No man hated his own flesh, but nourished and cherished it, even as the Lord loved the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones, right? If you're of the church, you are a Jew, right? You are a Jew. It's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. And he's saying you're of his flesh, of his body, of his bones, right? They can't have that. Because Zionism teaches that, well, Zionism tries to teach that, you know, oh, the church is a heavenly people and uh, the Jews are an earthly people. And then it's only when Jesus comes back in the flesh and sits upon the throne of David, that's when you'll know that everything's accomplished. Well, let me, let me show you here the lie. For we are members of his body, of his flesh and of his bones. Notice it says that here in the KJV. Of his flesh and of his bones. And I showed you that I was talking about other church, right? Church up there. But look at what they did in 530 in the new versions. Because we are members of his body. We are members of his body. Guess what's missing? Of his flesh and of his bones. See how they do? They're trying to erase that. Right? They can't have that. They can't have that. So basically what the Bible is teaching that Jesus Christ, who's the firstborn, every man starting from Adam, either when you believe you're of that first man, Adam, which is earthly. And when, the, and when God says he talks about, talks about his people, talking about his sheep, which are scattered abroad. God, who knows the end from the beginning, knows that man throughout time, all men throughout time of all tribes and all nations, he's going to gather those people who believe. And those are his scattered lands because they are what? of the flesh that he identifies as being the body of Christ. And he's saying, yeah, they are earthy because God did come in the flesh, but God is not of the flesh. But he's identifying them as being of the flesh because he says, what you've done to these, the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto what? Me, which is why when Apostle Paul was on the road, right, to Damascus, he heard a voice from heaven said, Paul, Paul, why dost thou what? persecute me. And who was Paul persecuting? The church. Of course, right? So that's why these Zionists try to say, oh, don't confuse the body with Israel. The problem they have again is, again, we want to prove all things. Let's show it. Let's show it unadulterated first. I just want to show you how they've been changing the Bibles and how all these people who say they believe the KJV is God's words, they're actually liars. They believe Schofield. But Israel shall be saved where? Same place that if you're in the church, you're saved. In the Lord. Right? In the Lord with an everlasting salvation you shall not be ashamed nor confound it. What kind of world? World without end. World without end. World without end. Well, I just showed you. I just proved to you beyond a shadow of a doubt there's two worlds. One of those worlds is going to end. Which world is not going to end? The world which is Jerusalem above is free as mother of us all. That world is the one that's not going to end. This one is going to end. 
right? And the reason God's saying that he's gathering his children for the four corners of the earth, gathering his lands, is because all of us who are of Adam, we're considered to be of the earth, earthy, but then we must be born again from above. Jerusalem above is free as mother of us all, and we're gathered into the heavenly kingdom, which he says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. We're gathered into that Jerusalem above, which is free as mother of us all because we've been born again, seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, right? That's why. And that includes everyone who's that. That's a precious stone, which is a jewel, which makes you a, a precious stone and a jewel before God. That is why it's saying the following. Israel shall be saved in the Lord. In the Lord? Well, there's one faith, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. And that's why you saw that they made the change to Jerusalem above as free as mother of us all. They tried to raise mother of us all because they knew that was a problem for them. Right? Israel above is free as mother of us all. That's why when you look at that, let's look at the change. 17. ESV. Go. Now, look at this. They can't have Jerusalem being saved in the Lord. But so Israel is saved. Notice it says in the Lord here. Jeez, man, it keeps doing that. It's really annoying. In the Lord here? Israel shall be saved in the Lord? World without end? Notice in this one, it says Israel shall be saved by the Lord. Small little changes that people just don't seem to notice, right? They think it's no big deal. It's a very big deal, right? And instead of saying world without end, Right? They have a problem with that. You know why they have a problem with that? Because they have a church age. Right? Shall not be ashamed and confounded world without end. It shall not be confounded to all eternity. Right? Right? World without end. Because world without end gives away that, one, there's multiple worlds, which they try to deny. And it says world without end, letting you know my kingdom is not of this world. That's why it says he that believeth on God has overcome the world. Well, what he does, is God trying to overcome his own world? No. <laughs> no, he's not overcoming his own world. You need to be born again into the kingdom of God, which is why it says, you must, unless a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Right? And so that's why these guys try to say, well, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven, they're not the same thing. You got to understand a Bible for truth. They're different. Uh, you know, the Bible proves them. See if I can find it. Listen to what it says here. They tried to change so many changes, guys. It is said, disciples marveled and said unto him, he said, answer again, I, Jesus said unto them, again, and said unto them, how hard is it to them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God, Right? And then this saying, children, how difficult is it? Difficult is it to enter the kingdom of God? That's wrong. It's hard for them to trust in riches. It's not difficult. It actually is very easy to enter the kingdom of God. All I gotta do is believe. He goes in and says, it's easier for the camel to go through the eye of a needle, eye of a needle, than for a rich man, right, to enter into the kingdom of God. Right? And they were astonished, right? Because they thought that, you know, it's based on wealth, being quote unquote blessed and having money. That was proof that God was with you. That's what they believed, false belief, you know. That's kind of the, that's kind of the whole uh, word of faith stuff, right? And Jesus looking up with them, he said, with men is it possible, all things are impossible, right? Let's see, I'm looking again, I say unto them. Give me a sin. If I can find it here, I'm sorry. Here it is, Matthew 24. I should just know that's where it's at. So here it is. It's talking about them, a rich person in the kingdom of God. 
right? And then he's, Jesus says, again, I say unto you. So notice it says, notice it says, enter the kingdom of heaven. Here it says kingdom of heaven, right? Kingdom of heaven. Notice, kingdom of heaven. So that is in both versions. Uh, KJV is on the left. ESV is on the right. Then it says, again, I say unto you, is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. So again, I say unto kingdom of God here, kingdom of heaven, again, I say unto you. It's saying again, I say unto you because it's saying the same thing rephrased. Right? So that proves that lie there. And so what you have with dispensationalism is what they're trying to do is this is all a plot. You gotta understand they changed these Bibles a long time ago. And what they're trying to tell you is they're saying, oh, the parable of the sheep and the goats. They're saying, oh, that's that's about the Jewish people. You, you gotta read that in context and context and context. They they'll literally deny all these other scriptures. When it's clear that Jesus said, I came only for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And it's true that Jesus knew only though he knew those who would believe. And so, yeah, he died for every man, but not everyone believes. And if you're not born again, you're not sealed in the Lamb of God, the Lamb of God. If you're not sealed in the Lamb, if you don't believe on the Lamb, you're not sealed in the Lamb, thus you become a goat. And he's saying, oh, all those who believe, I'm separating the sheep from the goats. And when you believe, you enter through me and you go in and out and find green pastures. And his kingdom is not of this world and you're born again. Jerusalem above is free as mother of us all. And you are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And that's why it talks about how there's a, a, a nation whose, whose maker and builder is God, not made with hands. Well, unfortunately for these guys, 1948, that Jerusalem, all that stuff, that's made by hands. And everyone knows that's You should know that's a fake. But I'm going to go ahead and end it here because it's gotten a little bit long. But what I want to prove to you that when these people talk about modalism, when they're talking about uh, Trinity, Trinity is a necessary component to make it fake because these guys are trying to tell you that Jesus is going to appear again. I mean, that's the it's like, was he going to be born a virgin again? They say, oh, no, he's going to appear again and, and literally on the cloud. And they're saying, well, you know, it because he's going to sit on the throne of David. Well, let me let me show you something. Let's do this. I'm going to show you one version because I don't have time to show you two fake ones here. First Kings 8. And the Lord hath performed the word that he spake. And I am risen up in the room of David, my father, and sit on the throne of Israel as the Lord promised and have built an house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. Right. He says he hath built a house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. He says he hath performed it. He says, I am, I have performed my word. I am risen up in the room of David and I sit on the throne of Israel now as I promised. And I have built that house, right? Well, that's funny because that matches That matches. Through faith, we understand that the worlds, plural, were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Right? He's saying he already made it. And he's saying he made two worlds. He already performed it. He's already sitting on the throne of God. He's already sitting on the throne of David. So this just goes to prove that these guys are, are wrong and the only way you can be um, um, enter the kingdom is to be born again in Christ.
And he's saying all those who are born again are of that nation. Who hath heard such a thing? Who hath seen such a thing? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travaileth, right? She brought forth her children. Her children? Jerusalem above is free as mother of us all. That's why Jesus says, I am the resurrection, right? Everybody starts out a Gentile. Once you're born again of the spirit, you're a precious stone, spiritual jewel. That's why you're called to, after you're born again, you're all told to go out and preach the word in season, not a season. That's why we're supposed to evangelize. Eve, angel, angel. You're actually considering, a, you're considered after you're born again, a ministering spirit. The children of the flesh are not the children of God. You're actually considered an angel because you were once a Gentile. God preached the word. The word was preached to you. And if you believe you're one of the first fruits, which you get a life that existed before your life. And now you're a precious stone, a jewel, an angel before God and no longer a Gentile, which is why the Bible says. And without controversy, 1 Timothy 3.16, great is the mystery of godliness. It's a mystery. It doesn't mean just because you learned about it doesn't mean it. This, is, this isn't how it happened all along. Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, right? To, make, to be manifest in the flesh doesn't mean God is flesh. God is a spirit. Those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Justified in the what? Spirit. Right? Seen of who? Angels. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And once you've seen him, you're born again by the what? Spirit. And that's why you're now a what? Angel, a ministering spirit. And because you've been born again by the incorruptible seed, by the word of God, the quickened by the spirit, which is life, now you're a child of God because the children of the flesh are not the children of God. And you get a life that existed before your own because you have... The, the spirit which existed before you. And because you're of that, we're all baptized in one spirit. That's why though we are many, we are one in Christ and we being one are many. That's why we're angels. And so we've seen of angels. We've seen him because when we've seen him, we're born again. Those who don't believe, he says, though you saw me, you did not see me because you made me like the corruptible man. And that's why the Bible says it's preached unto the what? Gentiles. Wait a minute. This is first Timothy. Was this not preached to the Jews? Exactly. Because everyone who doesn't believe is a Gentile. A Gentile is a generation. Tile means covered with tiles. The snake, the serpent is a covered, covered with tiles. Just like Adam tried to cover himself with a leaf that represents him trying to cover his own sin tile. And that means when you do that, you're corrupt, you're a corruptible seed. And if you're of the corruptible seed, you're, you're of the devil. Anyone who's, who commits sin is considered to be of the devil, and they must be what? Regenerated by the incorruptible seed, by the word of God. And thusly, we were all started out as Gentiles until we believed, and we were believed on in the what? World, this world, right? Kingdom's not of this world, and we're received up into glory, right? And that's why the Bible says, For unto us was the gospel priest as well as unto them. But the word priest did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed do enter into rest. Right? That's why if you enter into rest, the earth was made on the sixth day. You are born again. You're born again outside of time. And that's why you enter rest. And that's because you're born again out of time. You're considered a first fruit of God by the spirit. And you've entered into his rest, which is the Sabbath. And he says, 
and I sworn in my rest that they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished. When? From the foundation of the world. Right? By the Spirit. Right? And it says, For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. Right? Right? And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest, right? <coughs> so um, that's what the Bible's saying, guys. And so you got to watch out for these uh, people. And going back to the modalism, just to let you know that God is one spirit. They scoff at the idea of God being a spirit. But um, here we go. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. With all. For to one is given the Spirit, the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same spirit, to the another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. But all these work at the one and self same spirit. Self-same means exactly the same. Having standing in the self-same spot you're filling now. It's only one spirit. God is a spirit. It says, dividing to every man severally as he will. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of the one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be what? Jews or Gentiles. And I just show to you that people call themselves Jews and people call others Gentiles. But God's saying actually a true Gentile is just anyone who's a heathen and a true Jew is really one who believes the gospel. Whether we be bond or free, we're all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. So it's saying we're all members of that one body. We all have different operations, but it's all the same spirit, that one same spirit. And that's why, again, Trinity is a lie. God is the spirit. Those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. I pray that you believe the gospel. Here's the thing. The gospel is that God, the gospel is that God came in the flesh, right? In the man Christ Jesus. Jesus says, I come in my father's name. So the name of the Father is actually Jesus. He says, I come in my Father's name. He says, another will come in his own name, and him you will receive. And many will come into him in that day saying, Lord, Lord, have I not done many wonderful works and all these things in your name? So they'll profess the name, but they're liars, right? Because they're trying to work their way to, to heaven. They don't believe it's a free gift, right? They don't believe that it's truly grace, Right? They don't believe that um, they don't believe that it's truly by grace. And they really, they frustrate the grace of God. Because they don't understand if righteousness came by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Right? But when it says Christ is dead in vain, you got to understand God is the God of the living and not the dead. So there's the man, Christ Jesus. That's, there's one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. But it says how he made of twain. If I can get this right, I'm sorry. This is a new way of doing this.
He abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law and commandments and ordinances to make in himself for twain one new man. So that flesh, that blood, that was the payment. That was the propitiation for the sin. And he did that for everyone. But you don't get the spirit until after you do what? After you believe. John 69, of sin because you believe not on me. The legal debt was paid for every single man. And that's why to please God, who is my mother? Who is my father? Who is my sister? Those that do the will of my father. And this is the will of him that sent me, that all who see the son and believe on him. Well, he was seen great as a mystery of godliness. God was what? Manifest in the flesh, seen of angels, priest unto the Gentiles, received up in glory. So his saying he made of twain one new man. So that twain man was flesh and spirit. But we know God is a spirit. He is a spirit that quickeneth to give of life. And it says he might reconcile unto God in one body by the cross. Right? One body by the cross having slain. So that one body, since he says he, uh, the enmity was in his flesh, making twain one new man, and it's one body, that body is a what kind of body? Spiritual body. Have slain the enmity thereby. <laughs> and come and preach what? Peace to you, which were afar off. He's a prince of peace, right? This goes on to Isaiah 9, right? Which were far off and them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by, how do you get access? By one spirit unto the Father. Right now, therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints of the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles. Listen to this. He talked about how we have access by one spirit. And this is the same way that all these other people who have access came in. And he says, because of that, now you're no more strangers, because the only way you can be known by God is by having his spirit. And that's how you know more strangers. Remember, Jesus says, those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. God is a spirit. And he told us, says, neither in this mountain nor in Jerusalem. Well, but we know the Jerusalem above is free as mother of us all. That's the true Jerusalem. And he says, now we're fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Right? In my father's house are many mansions. And he says, are built upon the foundation of the apostles, prophets, Jesus Christ being himself the chief cornerstone. Well, he's basically saying that the apostles and prophets and all those before him, they also got access by what? One spirit, one Lord, one faith one baptism, into that same body in whom also built fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord. So anyone's talking about that temple being destroyed in 70 AD, that's a lie, that's a ruse, that's just something that we're waiting for the temple to be rebuilt. No, the temple is talking about the spiritual temple and you're not going to see that temple being built. But what you will see is you will see the, the temple of stone, which are all those of the flesh being destroyed. That's the one thing you will see. And if you see a temple, quote unquote, being rebuilt, that's another false sign, just like the false Jerusalem and the false Israel. In whom you also are built together from a habitation of God through the what? Spirit. Through the spirit. Doesn't say, does it say through the flesh? I guess that's why. That is why. Notice it says here. <laughs> not as though the word of God hath taken none effect, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel. Does God say, well, you know, all of Israel rejected him? No. Those who received the word of God, those are the true Israel. Those who rejected it, those are the people whom the seed, the word was taken away from and is given to other people. And those people who receive the seed, those are the ones who became true Israel because they believe. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham. That's the children of the flesh and not the children of God. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is, they which are the children of the flesh. These are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. I don't know why people can't see this and actually believe it. Right? People just don't believe it. For this is the word of promise. At that time I come and Sarah shall have a son. And not only that, Rebekah had also conceived by one, even by our father Isaac. For the children being not yet born, neither having done anything good or evil, that the purpose of God, according to what? Election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. 
The reason it says election is because what? Election simply means you are sealed in Christ. Because Jesus Christ is elect. You have to understand that Jesus Christ is elect. Right? So it says according to election is because Jesus Christ is the elect chief cornerstone. And because Jesus Christ is the elect chief cornerstone, once you believe you're sealed in Jesus Christ and you are elect because you're in the elect, which is Jesus Christ. It's as simple as that. Jesus Christ is chosen and you become chosen because you're in the chosen son and the elect servant, which is Jesus Christ. Right. He says, I said unto the eldest should serve the younger as written, Jacob have I love, Esau I hate it. Why? Because Jacob believed, and once Jacob believed, that's how he was regenerated. And anybody who's regenerated is sealed in Christ in Jerusalem. Jerusalem below is free as mother of us. What? All. Well, if you're in Jerusalem and Jerusalem is free as mother of us all, then who's the father? That would be Israel. And that means if you're in Jerusalem, you're also sealed in what? In Israel. Right? That's why it says you're no more strangers to fellow citizens of the saints of the household of God. It says, what shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. No, because God has concluded all men under sin. Once you believe, you've got the imputed righteousness of God. And if you don't believe, it is your fault. That's why you can't lay charge to God's elect, right? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? Because God has justified all those who are justified by the Spirit. And those who are justified by the Spirit are those who believe the word of God, who don't call God a liar, Right? which goes back to 1 John 5, 7. There are three that bear a record in heaven, the Father, the Word, the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. These three are one. They are the, that's the spirit of truth. There is one spirit. By one spirit are you all baptized into one body. For it said to Moses, I have mercy on whom I will have mercy. I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. He's saying that because many people are going to say, well, wait a minute. That person is a bigger sinner than I. Many will come to me that day saying, Lord, Lord, have I not done many wonderful works? And he's saying, look, I'll have compassion because I told you it's not of works, lest any man should boast. That's why it says if righteousness come by the law, then Christ has died in vain. So many people don't believe it. And so then it's not him that willeth, nor him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. For the scriptures said unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose that I raise thee up, that I might show my power in thee and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Right? He made a show of him that it would, even though Pharaoh did all these things, the, that story is being told to all of us that we may believe the word of God. Right? And if you believe it, you're shown mercy. If you don't believe it, then eventually you, you blaspheme the Holy Spirit and your heart is hardened in unbelief. And that's why it says you not haven't seen God. And that's why you'll be a child of the devil. And outside of Christ, who's the beloved son, you are hated because you did not enter his rest and you did not enter his love. God is love. Right? All right. So I hope that helps. I'm going to go ahead and end it here because I did a lot of recording. And this is just a test to see if this actually works. So again, the gospel is Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He rose again the third day according to the scriptures. If you believe that, Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me, half. See that half? Half. 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 Present of have, present tense, everlasting life. If it's everlasting, that means it can't end and it can't be taken from you. And shall not come into condemnation, but is past, present tense, from death unto life. Right? So what it is, is we're all considered dead. And so... Everyone you see walking around, it's like they're a zombie. And the only people who actually have life are those who are born again by the word of God, right? Because Jesus says, I come to give life and life more abundantly, meaning we're all dead in our sins. And so it's like everyone else is, have, is a zombie. So very, very, I say to you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead, 
shall hear the voice of the Son of God. Right? Because we were all dead in our sins. It's priests unto the Gentiles. We're all dead in our sins. But we actually heard the voice of God because we believed. And once we believed, he called us up. He says, after you heard and believed the gospel of your salvation, you received the Holy Spirit of promise. And then it says, we're offered up a what? Spiritual sacrifice unto God. And that's why it says, we're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's what people call the rapture. The rapture, as people teach it, is a lie. And it says, we have heard the voice of God. And they that hear shall what? Live. We have seen, we have heard, all who see the Son and believe in him have everlasting life. All that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given the Son to have life in himself, and hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. Right. We're all dead. Everyone who's got to conclude all men understand all, all of us are considered dead. We're all considered of the grave. Right. That's why he says, Jesus said to the prayer, you are beneath. I am above. And when they blaspheme the Holy Spirit, he says, now you're twice dead. He says, and, and he said, they should hear his voice and come forth. Those who have done good. Right. Why is it done good? Well, we know there's only one good, but one and that is God. But the good thing is because you have the imputed righteousness of God that once you believe you're sealed in Christ and you have not your own righteousness, but the righteousness of God because you're sealed in Christ. So it's an imputed righteousness freely given to you. And we're considered good, not because we're good, but because we're sealed in God who is good. He says, so we're raised in resurrection of life, right? As I said, it's no longer I live with Christ to live within me. We're already risen up. We're already seen in heavenly places. It's already past tense, right? And they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Those people blaspheme. They don't have life. Right? So I'm going to leave it at that. I really go on a long time. But I hope you believe the gospel. I hope you've believed it. And that way you can be passed from death to life. I know some of my videos are heavy. But I just want you to know that, look, we don't have to worry about those who can kill the body. We worry about those who can cast what the body and soul into hell. Right? All men are going to die. Right. And God wants us to have good. He was, wants us to have good things. Even in this world, he wants us to have good things. But this is not what we need to fear. We don't need to fear man and what man's going to do. No man can wreak havoc on us. We don't need to fear man. Right. We need to fear. Fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him that is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. That's talking about God. Right? Right? That's who we need to fear. So um, I'll go ahead and end it there. But uh, God bless.